Hello, and thanks for joining me on Healing Streams Reflections. The title for today's post is Scared to Death. The Bible says in Genesis 15:19, but Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Am I in the place of God? Joseph brothers were so feared to the extent that they fell at the feet of their brother. What they did to Joseph is still hunting them. Their guilty conscience seems to destroy their courage to live and to have intimate relationship with their brother Joseph. Yes, they, they, they used to be afraid of Joseph's dream. Now they are afraid of their life. They wish they are no more. Whoever thought that one day they will bow to Joseph, including even their father, who has gone to be with his ancestors. I think some of them were saying, among all of us, you were the youngest. And moreover, the family too will say, I am the one who gave birth to you and bathed you. Am I to bow to you too? And so we will sell you. Like any other humans, they lost sight because fear of the future blurs their perception. Therefore, the, 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 the Joseph brothers considered killing Joseph, but they settled on kidnapping him and selling him to slavery instead. That way, they wouldn't have his death on their foreheads without having to put up with him anymore. What was their fear? Were they afraid Joseph being the youngest ruling over them in the near future? As the content of Joseph's dreams implies, what was it? Their father Jacob or Israel is gone. Yet, the fear seems to take grip over their future, their lives. And what they are saying was that, what if Joseph was only keeping us alive for dad's sake? Now dad is gone. It's still still bearing a grudge against us. The Americans will say they were scared to death. Their own insecurities make them approach Joseph with what seems like a made up and manipulative story from their father. Before your father died, he instructed us before your father. It, now it's not their father. It is a little funny how they phrased the words of their father. Look at how they created and put a, a great deal of distance between themselves and Joseph. Instead of saying, our father told us.
to tell you. They say, your father told us to tell you. They distanced themselves from Joseph and from the message that their dad supposedly gave to them to pass along. They aren't speaking directly to Joseph and so directly confessing what they have done wrong in order to ask for forgiveness. Such fear prevents all the ten brothers from coming face to face with their crimes for kidnapping Joseph, selling him into slavery, and lying to their father about what happened to Jesus. They are so scared to death. Face to face with the one brother they have wronged. Their plea for forgiveness is indirect, complicated, motivated not by reconciliation or the hope for a good relationship, but by their fear of Joseph power. Now the vice president of Egypt. Now the prime minister of Egypt. Did the brother saw the special coat as an indignation, indication that Joseph will assume family leadership? So fear. So, 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 so fear not only keeps them from confessing, but also from receiving forgiveness. They are scared for their lives. The moment their father breath is last, so soon these brothers have forgotten the conversation they have already been through with Joseph at dinner table. When Joseph revealed his identity to them, Joseph told them not to worry, but look at where I am. Look at how God has used me to help save those who will be starving now. Look at how I am even saving you now. Joseph has already offered them forgiveness but they haven't fully received it and that is what made them scared to death at times god will offer something precious to you all you have to do is to receive by faith after all we walk not by sight but by for by faith they haven't believed what he said Maybe they have carried the guilt for so long about what they have done. They fear that life will be like without it. They fear forgiving themselves. Joseph then weeps and speaks back and responds with the powerful words. Do not be afraid. Fear, beloved, is a powerful force capable of paralyzing your destiny and causing you and I to freeze right where we are at, at, at and accept things for how they are. Don't accept the status quo. Please, come out of it. Don't accept your present circumstances as something that is just for you to keep it and to share testimonies with it. This is the time to overcome those hurdles of life. When our fear comes from sources other than God, our actions look totally different. Luke 12, 5 encourages, but I will tell you whom to fear. Fear God, who has the power to kill you and then throw you into hell. Yes, he is the one to fear. Many times, the source of fear comes from man. We are often driven by fear being disliked. When people dislike you, pressure to measure up or disloyalty. When we fear God, we have the freedom to be honest with man. Else the ifs, 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 ifs. ifs. But you see, the Lord interrupts our ifs with words of prophet Isaiah, but now, oh Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you, oh Israel, the one who formed you, says, do not be afraid, for I've ransomed you, I've called you by name, you are mine. When you go through deep waters, I'll be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, for I am, I am. I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. 
Isaiah 43 verses 1 to 3. Verses 1 to 3. Do not be afraid. Jacob tells me. Joseph tells me. Perhaps you see Joseph modeling the correct practice of always forgiving and not punishing crime. Should we always forgive and forget? My brother, my sister. Should we always forgive and forget? Even crimes should be forgiven. When we believe it feathers God's plan. Joseph rose to become the most powerful man in Egypt. Egypt next to Pharaoh. Joseph shows us that we as believers, they need to keep trying and persevere. Yes. They need to keep trying and persevere. And that the worst condition possible may not be final. We never knew when the next step will, will lead to success, right? We never knew. And you don't know either. Remember Genesis chapter 37 verse 11 to 1. The coat of many colors that was given to Joseph by the father. That even brought, I mean, breed more hatred and envy against the young adult as at that time. The Bible says, and his brothers envied him and envied him more. In the Hebrew Bible, the coat of many colors, Ketudet Pasim, is the name for garment that Joseph owned, which was given to Joseph by his father, as Genesis chapter 37, verse 3 to 4 tells him. So the gift of multicolored tonic, which was a symbol of his power and procedure over his brothers. Did this gift become an indication that in the near future, Joseph will assume the family leadership? Yes, probably. Actually, the story of, I mean, Joseph begins before Genesis chapter 37 because the 12 sons of Joseph were the offspring of four mothers. You see, so the rivalry between Jacob's two wives and two concubines caused much conflict within the family. You see, Joseph, along with his younger brother Benjamin, were the only children of Rachel, Jacob's favorite wife. Eight of Joseph's siblings were the sons of Jacob's unloved wife, Leah, and her handmaid, Zilpah, according to Genesis chapter 34, 22, 26. So it was all too apparent to these older brothers that Jacob loved Joseph, the son of his old age, more than all of them combined. Because Genesis chapter 37, 34 says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tonic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. And for, that, and for this reason, they hated Joseph. Also, did Jacob unwisely use the 17 year old boy? to spy on his older sons. And had Joseph report to him privately, fooled even the hatred of these older brothers of Joseph. Why will Joseph, at the age of 17 years, be employed by the CIA, by the FBI, to, to perform this reconnaissance mission on his brothers? by the father because Genesis chapter 37 verse 13 to 14 tells us that when they had been gone for some time Jacob said to Joseph your brothers are pasturing the sheep of Shechem get ready and I'll send you to them I am ready to go Joseph replied the CIA agent is so quick to respond go and see how your brothers and your flocks are getting along Jacob said, then come back and bring me a report. So Joseph sent him on his way and Jacob traveled to Shechem from their home in the valley of Hebron. Like David, the last born to take the father's flock to graze on the desert for some reason. Joseph was kept at home when his brothers took their father's flock to graze near Shechem. Could that also 
stir up the hatred? Why would his brothers be greatly anchored by his report? I mean, his, his report of his two dreams, symbol of authority over them, even payment. This dream gave birth to envy and jealousy against young man Joseph. And consequently, led to his brothers selling him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites and the Midianite soldiers of, to Egypt, to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. Later, after much ordeal, Joseph became the vice president of the prince. Parent, what decisions are you making, be it negatively or positively, that will likely generate a family among your kids in the near future? Conflict. And so Joseph told his brothers many years later, as for you, my brothers, you intend to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of men in lives. In a sense, God wanted it to happen so that through that God will save many. The name Joseph comes from the Hebrew word Yosef, which means he will add. So this increase of addiction, this increase or addiction, my dear brother, my dear sister, years later, brought glory to God. Although God knows that our perspective of the future is often limited to what we can see. I pray that God gives you and I the strength in these hard times of wars, killings, gun violence, and whatever you may tell me. And He wants us to look to Him in prayer and His Word when our circumstances start to overwhelm us. You all know that the past few weeks have been very tough. And people are looking for hope and encouragement in the midst of worry and anxieties. And that says the Lord. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the bears. They don't plant or harvest or store food in bands. For your heavenly father feeds them and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are can all your worries add a simple moment to your life as matthew 6 25 27 and matthew 6 34 says so don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries today trouble is enough for you and that's why jesus said come to me all of you who are with me and I'll take care of you. This reminds us of how my God loves us. And how he can give us rest. As he replaces our feelings of being anxious with his peace. As we focus on him and put our trust in God. God is all knowing. He will keep us to plan towards the future. Just as we can't build a home without blueprints. We can't have a vibrant, successful, and fruitful future without positive plan. And look at what the writer of Proverbs says, that someone who plans well will foresee dangers and I'll avoid them. But a foolish person, a non-planner, will rush ahead, do whatever is convenient, and end up paying the penalty. My brother, my sister, be Good and the faithful steward means being able to plan. God even said in Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you. See the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and hope. God says, I know the plans I have for you. God definitely knows what He is saying as our creator, provider, protector, and comforter. It means in you and my, our constant praying 
we are always expecting good things to come into our lives by God's grace and by God's power. May the living God keep your life active and your faith alive. And know that this is not the time to allow the circumstances of life to scare you to death. You are more than a conqueror. God bless you. Bye-bye.